Today we're going to talk about missions. I love to talk about missions, especially today because right now everyone that's sitting in this room is participating in missions as we are a mission ourselves, uh, almost to the one year mark of uh, when we began meeting here at Stained Glass Theater last fall. And uh, boy, I'm excited at how many have come over this past year, and I'm excited at the things that the Lord has done uh, through us. You know, when I think about missions, uh, I don't know about you, but there's a whole lot of things that come to mind. Um, I have pictures in my mind. I have thoughts of missionaries, people that I aspire and look up to. Uh, I, I have an emotional response to that. And I wonder where you are today. I wonder what you think. I wonder how many here are involved in missions and how many aren't really, how many really even know what that means when we say missions, you know, like, because like sometimes you think a mission like Mission Impossible, you know, in the movie, and it's like you got this team of like crack people that are not like on crack, but you know, like really good, uh, you know, good, really good at what they do. They're real hardened and, and they, they operate as, as kind of like a machine and they accomplish the goal. Uh, so that's a little bit different than the kind of missions we're talking about. We're talking uh, about going and sharing the good news of who Jesus is, of helping those who are in need, of, of uh, blessing people that um, maybe don't have some things that we have that, and that maybe we can go and, and encourage them and offer, offer some things that, that we might have to share with them. But if you, if you really think about where missions came from, it really goes back to the Old Testament. It goes back to the time where God would speak to a prophet. And uh, though that person would take a message from the Lord to a specific people group. And, and if, you, you know, if you've read the Old Testament at all, you might think of you know, a few Old Testament uh, people like Jonah. You know, I think we're all familiar with Jonah, the, the prophet that got sent to Nineveh. And he didn't want to go to Nineveh, and so he went somewhere else. And then God sent a big fish to eat him, and so that's quite a story. Um, so we can think of a lot of different people, maybe Isaiah, Jeremiah, Amos, uh, people that the Lord sent messages to, the, His chosen people, Israel. And then those people had a choice to respond. And that's really where missions come from. Now, for us, I think we think more New Testament-like uh, when we think about missions. We think about um, verses maybe like Matthew 28, 19. And I put some of these verses up, and they're kind of cut off, so that's okay. I'll call them out if you can't see them on the screen. Um, but that's really a, a core verse. Matthew 28, 19 says, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you and behold I am with you to the end of the age and that's Jesus speaking that's one of the, one of the final things that he said as he was talking to his followers and he was sending them out he wanted them to go and to to share what they knew to help people to be a blessing to them and so they went out and so we have people like Paul and and Barnabas and John Mark and, and many others that were kind of the forerunners of that. And we see some, some of what they did through the letters that Paul wrote and other uh, epistle writers. And so we think about that as uh, missions. And, and of course, really that's more foreign missions. And so uh, whatever you think about in missions, probably that's just one part of it. It's such a big field. Um, you know, as being a church plant like we are, we are a North American mission or we're a home mission or as, as we refer to Acts 1-8 where it talks about going to Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the ends of the earth. We're a Jerusalem mission and so we're doing something here among our own people. Uh, we're all Ozarkites uh, or whatever you want to call us, hillbillies maybe, I don't know. Uh, but we are, we are of that people group and so we are, we are trying to minister to the people that are around us. I pulled together a few famous quotes some, from some of my favorite um, missionaries, uh, and I want to share those with you today. I, I thought they were kind of inspirational. This first one is from Robert Spear, who said, Prepare for the worst, expect the best, and take what comes. Mike Stachura said, The mark of a great church is not its seating capacity, but its sending capacity. Hudson Taylor said, It will not do to say that you have no special call to go to China. With these facts before you and with the command of the Lord Jesus to go and preach the gospel to every creature, you need rather to ascertain whether you have a special call to stay at home. And so he's making this di distinction because I think many of us think you have to be called 
uh, to missions, but we're all actually commanded to be a part of, of missions. And so it's, do we have an excuse really uh, to not be a part of missions is what he's alluding to. Jim Elliott says, he is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. Hudson Taylor, another one from him, God isn't looking for people of great faith, but for individuals ready to follow him. C.T. Studd said, Christ wants not nibblers of the possible, but grabbers of of the impossible. So a lot of really good quotes from people that um, have been in difficult places for years at a time, for years at a time with very little. Uh, many of these were before there was organized missions and so uh, you would basically just, you and maybe your family, you would just move far away and begin to live in another culture and get to know those people and learn the language and you begin to share faith with them maybe over 10, 20, plus years uh, if you lived that long to, and to survive that process. So uh, some of the greats. Now when I, when I think about missions for me personally, there are some, there are some certain people that um, I, I highly esteem. And I've got a picture. If you'll put that picture that's right up there, yeah. I don't know if you can see that. Let me kind of move over. <laughs> this is a picture from 2010, uh, the last time we were in Ukraine. Um, I'll kind of point out some of these people uh, that's Rhonda up there in the top left-hand corner. This picture was taken, I believe, <clears throat> was that at Alex's house? Yeah. Does that sound right? Okay. All right. So this is in Brusi this is in uh, Brusilov, Ukraine, which is about an hour and a half south east, no, southwest of Kiev, which is the capital. Um, Natasha, to who's the right, uh, she's one of my heroes. She is Pastor Sergei. I'll get to him in a minute. His wife. And she has seven or eight teams of people, mission teams that come every year. Uh, they live there at the church, upstairs uh, at the church, and, and they host all those people. And so she constantly has people coming in and out all the time, and she's cleaning and cooking and getting ready. They cook for us every meal of every day, amazingly. They even tried to make pizza one time. Now it had kind of weird things on it, like eggs and I don't know, I'm not sure what some of the vegetables were, I probably don't want to know, uh, rabbit meat and things like that. But they, they, they really gave everything, the best of what they had to serve us. Uh, and she is just a, a hero because she's so faithful, constantly uh, doing that day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. Uh, this is my lovely wife, Stephanie, right there. I'm sure she's really happy with me right now that I put a picture of her up there. But it's a good picture, I think. Uh, that was Sean. He was part of our mission team. That was Debbie, part of our mission team. That's Alicia right there behind, kind of on the second row in the middle. And David. This is, of course, they're a couple years younger, so they look a little older than that now. Uh, our two oldest kids. Um, the woman that's to the right of David, that's Alex, who's the, well, I'll get to Alex in a minute. She's, she's one of the people, and actually her mother was the first believer in this village about 17 years ago now. Um, her, her mother, which would be Alex's grandmother. And then this is her, uh, I guess, granddaughter uh, there on her lap. Uh, then this is Bobby, who's painting right here for us today. Uh, this is Alex. Now Alex is another one of my heroes. I was just talking about his mother. Alex serves as the youth pastor at the main church in Brusilov, but he also does a lot of different things. He even translated for us while we were there. Um, but he he uh, travels back and forth to Kiev. He does. He goes to school there, to the Bible Institute, and uh, he serves with all the mission teams that come all the time. Alex is, I think, in this picture, he was about 21 or 2 years old. Valia, to the right, another hero. She's translated for us twice now, uh, the last two times we were there. Um, she teaches uh, at a, a language school nearby uh, in a neighboring oblast. Oblast is kind of like, a, like we might think of a province in Canada. And um, she helps mission teams. She travels all over helping mission teams, translating for them. Um, makes very little money. Um, but serves very, very, very faithfully. And then Pastor Sergei, who's on the bottom left next to me, uh, is he? He. I want to tell you his story. This really, he really why the picture is here. I just didn't want to ignore all the people in the picture. But I want to tell you the story very briefly about um, how all this came to be. When communism uh, fell apart in the Soviet Union in the early 90s, um, 
Ukraine was one of the republics that declared independence. And at that time, there were almost no believers anywhere in the country. There was maybe a concentration on the western part. Of course, this is kind of central and eastern Ukraine. And that was about it. And Sergei received Christ for some missionaries that were there in Kiev. He he, with two friends, went out to this area, Brusilov, which is kind of a fairly rural, rural area. Uh, it's in the Jatoma Oblast, and I, I think maybe 300,000 people live in the Jatoma area, and there's about maybe just a few thousand that live in the Brusilov area. And he, he went out with two friends. They didn't have any money. They were, you know, we might call them missionaries. Their goal was to plant churches and to share the gospel. There were no believers at all in this area, not a single not a single believer. So they, they came to this area completely unchurched, completely unreached. Uh, they worked on a farm very hard. They worked all day and then at night when they got done they began building materials to build the first church. And so they did this for, many, for several years and as they went about working on the farm they met people and they shared the gospel and they, they got saved and so they began the first churches and over the last 15 years, 16, 17, I guess 17 years now, 18 years, um, those three men that went out there have now planted 15, we were there for the 14th church, I think they planted another church since we've been there, so 15 churches in that area. Uh, with several hundred people that have become believers. Uh, so it's just a, an, an amazing story of just a simple person. Probably before I mentioned him, you would have never heard about him or known about him. Historians will probably ignore him as being insignificant in the world. And yet, he changed, uh, he changed the eastern part of, of Ukraine forever. And, and we will never know beyond our life even the, the repercussions of what he did. And so um, you can go back to the other slide. Thank you. So I hope that puts a face on a little bit of what it can look like. You know, that to, you don't have to be glamorous and big and do great things to make a difference in missions. Uh, this last week we were blessed as a church to have Houston's First Baptist come. Uh, they brought about 60 people. Uh, many of those were junior high and high school students. Uh, they were all over Ozark passing out flyers, uh, inviting people to the block party which was last Thursday night which was, a, which was a great success. Had a really good time. We had several new families that came and had a good time, ate some food and, and many of us who had been working throughout the week that hadn't got to spend time with him, you got to come and meet them and it was a good night. Uh, we had invited them to back our Bible club throughout the week. Uh, so, and then uh, they, I think they passed out a little over 2,000 flyers to, to invite people to our public launch. So we were blessed with their service uh, as they came out and um, shared the gospel uh, with several people, I understand, and then uh, uh, helped in doing some service projects and blessing some people. I think they even did a, a service project here at the theater to help out. Uh, doing some flooring and stuff upstairs. So it was just a good week. And uh, I wanted to give you a little update if you weren't able to to uh, get on Facebook and kind of see what all was going on with that. It was just a great, a great week. And I'm, I'm so thankful to them uh, that they came and, and did that for us. And, and it's it's amazing how the interconnectedness of missions is. You know, we're, we're a mission uh, serving in a certain area. We've been blessed by another mission that's come here. We're getting ready to, and, and in a few moments, we're going to pray for the mission team that's going to Suriname, uh, which is in northern central, nor northern South America. Is that right? In the right geographic? Okay. And uh, we have four team members coming. It'll be the, the historically the first uh, international mission trip being sent out from Life's Journey. So it'll be a historic uh, time for us as a, as a church to send out our first foreign mission team. And so we're excited. We'll pray for them. So it's an interconnected thing. Uh, as Paul, and we won't go through and read a lot of that today, but uh, we talked a couple weeks ago, a couple weeks ago about Paul's first and second missionary journeys. And as he was out uh, on those journeys, he would go to different areas, planting churches, and later on, those churches would would send to other people, and, and it was just an interconnected effort. And so I think that as we form a picture in our mind of what missions is, and and as we begin to ask the question, what is my role? In missions, you know, what is my responsibility to help people? Then I think we have to recognize how interconnected it is. It's not something that we just go and do. 
and then it's over and then we kind of it's like we there's spiritual points or something you know like on video game you get points and stuff it's kind of like we get spiritual points and then pretty soon as we build up our points you know God loves us more or something I don't know but it doesn't work that way you know it's all about giving it's not about what we receive it's about looking to see where the needs are looking to see um, where where there, the love of Christ is not being shown and going to that place looking to see who's hungry and who needs food and going there uh, I remember when we first went uh, to um, the Brusilov church, there were so many needs there, it was overwhelming. Um, in fact, the, they had had a drought, not unlike ours here, uh, that we're having now, but except they didn't, all their wells were dried up, there was almost no water. Um, it's very cold there, so if you try to take a shower in the freezing cold water, it's a very eye-opening experience. I remember one of the baths that I that I got was I actually got a pail of dirty water with ice chunks floating in it and that's how I got to bathe although I was so glad to just be able to bathe it was okay I was somewhat thankful for that uh, but there were so many needs there uh, so many things they didn't have they the church didn't really have any video equipment uh, we were able to buy them a projector and some computers and different things and and so it was so good to, to be able to see what those needs were and to be able to help with that and that's that's what we do as believers is as when God commands us to go and make disciples we we go and we share Christ's love we uh, reinforce our brothers and sisters as they're serving and uh, we leave the fruit to God. And by fruit, I mean we, we leave what happens. We leave uh, how things are going to happen in His hands. Because I think for some of us that are more of the controlling personality, uh, we like, we want results. And, you know, for example, uh, when you go out to plant something in the ground, and there's not much growing right now, and I know many of us who have little gardens in the backyard, it was kind of a dud year. Uh, we didn't, didn't actually do one this year. We did one last year. And you plant seeds and you spend all that time weeding and stuff, and you're expecting a result. You know, you just planted 10 corn seeds, and you're hoping that 10 stalks of corn will come up. But that's not always what happens. And uh, being uh, finite and mortal, we don't see the future. We don't really understand or, or know what the result needs to be. And I think that's something that uh, as we take uh, first steps uh, for, for many of us in being missional, that we realize that it's, it's up to God to bring the results. That we can't make things happen. Uh, that it's only Him that can bring uh, those results. Now I mentioned a while ago uh, Acts 1.8 and in, in that verse which I'm, I'm going to um, not spend a lot of time on it because I know I talk about it all the time because I love that verse. Um, I think it's important that we realize that missions is not something we have to do far away. You know, Today we're celebrating as we send a team out to go to a far away place. But missions is something we can do when we go home tonight, we can go to our neighbor's house and be a blessing them. You know, take them food, um, offer to mow their yard, uh, encourage them if they're down, if they're discouraged, invite them, invite them to church, invite them to lunch. Uh, you know, there's so many things that we can do. We can go to neighboring states where there's sister churches and, and help them. It's just an interconnected thing, and we need to be involved in all of those areas. Now, I know that for some of you that... Um, you know, maybe you're sitting back and you're thinking, man, you know, this is not even on my radar. I'm just trying to pay my bills and survive. I'm just trying to get by. Uh, I've got kids to raise, and you're thinking, man, how can I ever, uh, you know, how could I ever be? And maybe you, you, in a minute you're looking up here at these people that are going on this team, and how could I ever be like that and, and go far away and, and, and do that? But, you know, it, it happens in very small steps. You just take a small step. Maybe one step is you make a commitment today, which we're, I'm going to ask all of you guys to make a commitment to pray uh, for these uh, nine, nine or ten days as they're gone. And just pray for protection, pray for blessing, that things would go well, no one would get hurt, um, that there would be uh, opportunities to share the gospel and to encourage the churches there that they're going to serve. And so maybe that's the first step for you is just to pray for them, just faithfully, just once a day as you have your prayer time or as you think about it, just to pray for that team. Maybe that's a good first step. 
Maybe for some of you, uh, you, you need to do something a little bit more. Maybe you need to help. We're going to be making a craft uh, later this afternoon with our kids uh, that they're going to take with them. So maybe you want to help with that. Maybe you want to give financially to support uh, their trip. Maybe, maybe you need to begin to, to think and pray about and look at your vacation calendar. And, and maybe you're at that place where you're thinking, man, it's, it's time for me to take that next step. It's time for me to, to go somewhere and to serve. Uh, we're hopefully going to be going back to Ukraine uh, this next year, and so that'll be coming up. We've talked about a, a number of different trip possibilities. So, uh, you know, there's always more places to go, and there's always more need, and there are people uh, to meet that need. And in fact, right now in the International Mission Board, which is um, kind of our, the, the group that we cooperate with to send missionaries to other places, uh, they, they only have about a third of the resources they need to send all of the missionaries uh, that they have that would like to go. So the, the horizon can seem daunting, uh, but, but we'll have to recognize that, that the beginning place as we look at it is between us and the Lord. And where is He taking us? What is He asking us to do? And I think that probably all of us in our lives, if we, if we really think about it and we're really honest with ourselves, because there is, a, there is an act of giving something, whether it's time, whether it's money, uh, there's an act of giving something. There is a joy that comes from that, even though we're, we have to sacrifice even sometimes. I remember the first time I went to Ukraine, it was terrible. I, I went by myself, my wife wasn't able to go, and um, it was so hard, and I missed them so much, and it was just a just an emotionally draining experience. Uh, so there is sacrifice, there is difficulty. Um, you're not going to be able to eat the food that you like to eat typically. Uh, you're not going to be able to, you know, either, you, it, it, what's interesting about missions, I've noticed especially in foreign missions, you either go to some place that's really hot, I mean it's just, you're dying, it is so hot, or you go somewhere that's really cold and you're just freezing cold. I don't know why that is. I don't know if that's like a law somewhere that it, just, it has to be, the temperature has to be unpleasant. I don't know. That's just part of the experience. But it seems I'm sure that's not the case. I'm sure that somewhere there is a mission trip that can take you to, I don't know, somewhere else that's not so uh, unpleasant. But that seems to be the case. But there, we're not going to have those comforts. And so there's a sacrifice involved. But there is a joy that comes from giving. You know, it's it's not like uh, when we when we want something. You know, you're at be in my case, I'm at Best Buy, and I see whatever cool gadget. Um, you know, I don't I don't uh, lust after the iPad 3 anymore because now I have an Android tablet, so I'm content. But now now that I have my Android tablet, you know, I'm thinking, okay, well, what's the next cool tablet that I can have? You know, it's when we get stuff, it's all it's a never-ending hole. You know, we always want more and more and more, no matter how much we get. You know, I'll bet I'll bet if I ask in here, and if I said, who has enough? money in here. I'll bet just very few, I'm not going to ask, I don't want to embarrass anybody, but I'll bet very few people would raise your hand. But I'll bet a number of us, you know, if we all, if, which, and we're not going to do this, but if we all kind of looked around and figured out, you know, who was wealthy and who wasn't, we might feel like if we had less that that person sitting over there in that chair, that they had enough. See, and so it's always a matter of perspective. We always feel like we need more, we don't have enough. But when you give something, when you serve someone, when you help someone, then that's not an empty joy. So I'm going to invite uh, Deanna and Alan and Brittany and Shannon to come up right now. We're going to pray for them. Uh, I believe this is, and tell me if I'm wrong, Brittany and Shannon, this is your first international mission trip? Is that correct? Okay. All right. So this is going to be their first experience. Alan and I have been to Suriname several times and some other places as well. They're going to be leading the team. And as they come up here, I want us to just, yeah, just it's going to be awkward for a minute. Just kind of stand there and look pretty. Y'all look great. Oh, you guys have matching shirts on. Wow. Look at that. What's wrong with you guys? We didn't get the memo. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, okay. Okay, Deanna. All right. I was left out as usual. So this is our Suriname team, and we want to be faithful to pray for them today, but we also want to be faithful to pray for them in the days to come. So I'm going to let 
David, I'm going to let you dim the lights just a little bit uh, so nobody feels like they got a spotlight on them. And I'm going to ask you, is maybe Annette, would you mind, could I trouble you to just play some music quietly while we pray? And I'm going to invite uh, anyone who, and you don't have to be a member or anything like that to come and pray, but if you would like to just come and lay hands on these, that's kind of a tradition that we see in the scriptures. We lay hands on people to pray for them and encourage them. I'm going to invite you just to come down right now, and you don't have to. You can just sit right there and pray from your seat if you would like. But I'm going to invite some just to come down and lay hands and pray for them to encourage them. And I'm going to let you guys just pray out loud all together all at once. We won't take turns um, so we don't spend a long time. But I'm going to be silent for just a moment. And let's pray for these that are going to serve the Lord in the, in the week and a half to come. Lord, as we come together and as one in one mind, being like-minded this afternoon, I pray for these four individuals as they humble themselves to go and serve you in a land far away this week. We just pray for protection, that you would bless and encourage them as they're exhausted, as they lose sleep traveling, as, as they have a lot of demands on their schedule and placed upon them, the emotional needs of the people there. God, would you just grant them peace and strength through all of that. And Lord, would you bind us together as we support and pray for them this week, that, we, that they would feel a sense of encouragement as we pray, that they would recognize your power and strength in their life that will cause them to, to endure any hardship. And Lord, I pray that the love that you have for them will just spill out of their lives as they bless others, as they touch others on a deep level, Lord. We pray for salvations for people that are lost and far from you, that they would be saved and that their lives would be forever changed. And we just thank you, Lord, and ask all of it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. That's good. That's good. So today's been kind of a different day. I didn't really preach a sermon. But I wanted, my goal was to get us to do this thing together. And I think it's easy for us to send these four and they go in, do their thing, and they come back and give a report, and then we move on with life. And we forget about the importance of being missional, how we're all called. Matthew 24, 14 says, And this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. And so the reason there is a time lag between Christ's coming and His return is to give an opportunity for everyone to have an opportunity to experience the gospel, all the nations, as Matthew 24 says. Peter 3.15 says, But in your hearts honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Do it with gentleness and respect. And you know, I think this is one place where we struggle as as and maybe more historically than even right now. But there's been a time where uh, in some churches and in some places we have gotten a little arrogant. We've gotten a little judgmental of other people and thinking that we're great and, and, and better than other people. And so we've had this haughty spirit. Uh, we've been proud and, and we've lacked these two things that are mentioned here. Gentleness and respect. And so we need to carry those things with us wherever we go, whether we're at work, at school, uh, talking to our neighbor, that's how we ought to be. That's how we ought to treat people and approach them as we share Christ with them. I want to uh, thank Bobby for drawing this great drawing over here. And I, I, I hope that, you know, perhaps uh, if you are a ponderer uh, of artwork, you know, I am always kind of looking at the artwork, trying to understand the hidden meaning. Uh, one of the things that, as I was asking Bobby before, I said, you know, well, what are you going to draw today? And if you see these little white deals, th those are like the um, dandelion seeds that they fly off of the, you know, if you blow them, like my kids like to blow them, and they fly all over, and some of us aren't real happy about that because it just plants more weeds in our yard. But they have a multiplying effect. As, as they leave and, and that's an amazing illustration today for missions because that's what we do is as we are sent out into various places in our school, in our home, all the way across the world to Suriname, to Ukraine, to other places, we are that seed that's being spread and as we plant ourselves and we take root and we grow, then we can be the ones that make a difference. 
So I want to I want to thank you guys for, uh, especially you who are guests today, for uh, being a part of our service and um, joining us as we celebrate this time. It's a special time for us as we send this team off, uh, as we come up on our one year mark as a church, and as we celebrate what God has done through us. I think all of us will be the first ones to to admit uh, that we're here around at the at the very beginning, uh, that it's God the one that's done the work, and uh, we just kind of stood around and. You know, just watched him do the work, and uh, it's just exciting to see that. And so, I want to invite you to come to a couple things uh, before we close. Uh, one is going to be um, this afternoon. We have family ties. It's um, children's activities for families, so it's for parents as well, or uh, whoever came, whoever the kids came with. Um, we do those activities out here in the atrium. We'll take just a few minutes break, and then we'll go and do that. Uh, then we have uh, also our um, our uh, College ministry is going to be meeting at Cliff and Sanders' house. If you don't know how to get there, talk to me or somebody. Uh, they're going to swim and do have, have dinner and do some good things out there. Uh, on And I think we're having Women's Bible Study this week. Is that right? Okay, we didn't last week, but we will have this week. So if you'd like to know more about Women's Bible Study on Monday morning, let me know, and we'll be glad. Or Patty, would you raise your hand? Talk to this, this nice young lady right here, Patty. And she'll tell you about Women's Bible Study. Thursday night, we will be in Ozark on the square out there on the lawn. Uh, we're going to have a block party trailer with us doing games with kids. Our worship team is going to be playing at the pavilion. Uh, it's going to be a great night uh, of time to serve our community. It's the celebration of the 124th uh, uh, year of Ozark's existence since it was founded as a city. And so we're privileged to partner with our city uh, for that event. So we want to invite you guys to come out. That starts at 5 o'clock and it goes until 8 o'clock clock and um, there is a sign up on Oasis uh, which is our Facebook page and uh, you can sign up there if you would be able to help with that and if you are not on Oasis and would like to be added let me know and I can make that happen then August 19th is our public launch and that will be a big day and uh, we are really excited about it uh, I know that many of you are exhausted. Uh, we have just had, you know, we had a, a big outreach last Thursday night, and we've kind of seemed to have one thing after another. So hang in there, where it's the home stretch. Uh, we're going to calm it all down here <laughs> once we get to the fall, um, but we have uh, a lot to accomplish between now and then. So we'd like to invite you, uh, especially if this is your first time here today, to be a part of that. It'll be a historic moment uh, for us uh, as a church to have our public uh, launch. And, and really the purpose of that, I've had several people that have asked me, well, you guys have worship and you're already meeting and, and you're already uh, doing churchy things, so why are you having a public launch? Well, the answer to that question is that uh, you may not have realized this, but we have been, we started with, with basically meeting in homes this last summer, uh, not this summer, but in 2011. And we, we, as we met in homes, we kind of added things over time. We began ministry to children and college students and youth, or junior high and high school students and Bible studies and, and worship service, and we've kind of added things and we've kind of migrated into being a church. You know, we, well, we were a church in the beginning, we kind of migrated into being a, a multi pronged uh, church and so this is going to be a celebration of that point of going from the, those beginning stages uh, to to these ministries and so we invite you to celebrate that with us uh, any other announcements that somebody has I always forget something in that okay all right so for your setup team you get to just relax after the service. We're going to leave this up because the worship team is going to have a rehearsal a little bit later. So we'll just maybe take a five or ten minute break and we'll go to family ties. And if that, if you guys, whoever's heading on home, we want to wish you a wonderful afternoon and thank you so much for coming. We have lunch every week at one o'clock. Somebody's waving, waving. Jordan. I'm looking down. I had my hand up. Jordan. Um, you is also. Yes, we'll have youth. Oh, and that's a change. Yes, student ministry for junior high and high school students will be Wednesday uh, this week rather than Thursday. We've been meeting on Thursdays this whole last year, and we're switching to Wednesdays. So, yes, thank you. Jeff? And this afternoon, youth will be meeting. Oh, yeah, during family ties. Yeah, I was including you in that. Yeah, when I say family ties, then sorry, I was including. Students have a special time where they go, and, and then we meet up with them later. So, yeah, you bet. Okay, well, I'm going to close this in prayer and we'll be dismissed. Lord, thank you for a good day. Thank you for an opportunity to just take a breath and to walk away from the craziness of life.
the busyness of our schedules, uh, of, of being around people that are hostile towards us, that, that are hard to work with sometimes, uh, that uh, there's just so many family members that are difficult. Uh, Lord, there's so many things in life that, that cause us harm. And so I thank you for this safe place that we can come to today and to relax. Uh, to be blessed by your spirit and the, the fellowship of people that are friendly and generous and kind and who want to help. And we thank you for this time and ask all of it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Have a great day.